5,000 years ago, on a bend of Ireland's River Boyne, a people with no written language raised a monument that still defies comprehension. A great mound of earth and stone, 80 meters across and 12 meters high, ringed with giant curbstones carved in spirals, diamonds, and otherworldly motifs. A monument older than the pyramids, older even than Stonehenge. This is Newgrange. For centuries, it was just a grassy hill to the farmers who worked the surrounding fields, a place of myth and whispers. But in recent years, science has reached into its ancient chambers, and what it revealed has left archaeologists stunned. DNA from the bones sealed within tells a story of power, ritual, and bloodlines. A story that hints Ireland's earliest farmers may not have lived as simple equals, but under rulers who blurred the line between man and God. Tonight, we step inside the mound, into the darkness, to uncover a secret older than history itself. From the outside, Newgrange looks almost gentle, a rounded dome blanketed in grass, blending with the rolling hills of the Boyne Valley. But approach the entrance, and its true strangeness comes into focus. A narrow stone passage runs nearly 20 meters into the earth, ending in a cruciform chamber at the mound's heart. Above the doorway, a small stone window, what archaeologists call the roof box, sits quietly, almost overlooked. And yet, once a year, at dawn on the winter solstice, something extraordinary happens. The rising sun slips above the horizon, and a single beam of light pierces the roof box. For just a few minutes, it travels down the narrow stone corridor and floods the inner chamber with golden light. Then, as quickly as it came, it vanishes, plunging the tomb back into darkness for another year. The alignment is so precise that it lasts only minutes, too exact to be chance. The builders of Newgrange were not primitive farmers. They were astronomers, engineers, and visionaries who captured the sun itself inside their monument. Long before archaeologists studied it, local myths tried to explain Newgrange's purpose. Some said it was the home of the Dogda, the father of the gods in Irish mythology, whose magic controlled the cycles of nature. Others believed it was a portal to the other world, where fairies and spirits held court. Farmers treated it with awe, often avoiding the mound out of fear that disturbing it might bring misfortune. The spirals carved into its stones only deepened the mystery. Were they maps of the heavens, symbols of life and death? or messages meant for generations, thousands of years in the future. Whatever they meant, one thing was clear. Newgrange was built to endure. A monument not just for the living, but for eternity. By the 17th century, antiquarians had begun describing the mound in writing. But it wasn't until the 20th century that systematic excavations transformed Newgrange from folklore into archaeology. In 1967, Professor Michael O'Kelly stood inside the chamber during the winter solstice and watched the sunbeam stream directly down the passage. It was the first time in thousands of years a human had witnessed what the builders intended. The monument, once thought a simple tomb, was revealed as a cosmic machine, its architecture intertwined with the heavens. Excavations uncovered beads, tools, pottery, and human remains. But the remains were not whole skeletons. They were cremated fragments, scattered bones, carefully chosen pieces. Some archaeologists suggested that bodies were exposed to the elements before selected bones were interred inside the mound. Others believed the cremated remains were offerings, reserved for the few deemed worthy. Who were these people? Farmers? Priests? or rulers of a kind the world had long forgotten. The stones could not answer, but science soon would. For decades, archaeology could go no further. The bones were too fragmented, 
too silent. But in the 21st century, a new tool emerged, ancient DNA sequencing. What once seemed impossible, recovering genetic code from 5,000-year-old remains, suddenly became reality. Scientists extracted fragments of bone from the chamber of Newgrange. They worked in sterile labs, carefully piecing together damaged strands of DNA. Each sequence was like a puzzle, where most of the pieces had been lost to time. At first, the results seemed ordinary. The people interred at Newgrange were descended from Neolithic farmers who had migrated into Ireland, bringing agriculture and monumental building traditions with them. Some were related, perhaps families chosen for burial together. But then, one sample changed everything. From the skull of an individual buried at the very center of the monument, geneticists discovered something extraordinary. This person's parents were first-degree relatives, either siblings or parent and child. It was deliberate. It was dynastic. And it was almost unprecedented in European prehistory. In human societies, incest of this degree is rare. But when it does appear, it is often tied to power. Egyptian pharaohs married within their bloodline to preserve divinity. Certain royal families in antiquity did the same, believing their blood carried sacred power. And now, here, in prehistoric Ireland, the same pattern emerged. This was not a mistake of genetics. It was a statement. Whoever this person was, they were placed at the very heart of Newgrange interred in the chamber that aligns with the solstice sun. They were chosen, elevated, revered. The implications stunned the scientific community. For decades, scholars imagined Neolithic Ireland as egalitarian, a society of small farming villages where power was shared. The DNA evidence shattered that image. It suggested a hierarchy. Elites who guarded bloodlines, perhaps seen not just as leaders, but as divine beings. The myths of godlike rulers, long dismissed as folklore, suddenly carried new weight. When the findings were published, headlines were sensational. God kings of prehistoric Ireland. Some scholars embraced the term. Monumental architecture, cosmic alignments, and now dynastic bloodlines, all the signs of centralized, sacred authority. Others urged caution. Was this really evidence of kingship or a single anomaly, a ritual act never repeated? Could it have been spiritual rather than political, an attempt to preserve cosmic purity rather than dynastic rule? No matter the interpretation, the discovery forced a reckoning. Prehistoric Ireland was not as simple as once thought. It was complex, stratified, and perhaps ruled by figures who blurred the boundary between mortal and divine. The revelation at Newgrange leaves us with questions as unsettling as they are fascinating. If elites existed in Neolithic Ireland, how did they rise to power? Was their authority based on knowledge of the heavens, the ability to command labor, or the belief that their blood connected them to gods? Did the solstice alignment serve as proof of their legitimacy, as if the sun itself bowed to their dynasty? And if one godlike figure lay within Newgrange, might others rest in the passage tombs scattered across Ireland's hills, still waiting for science to unlock their secrets? Newgrange still stands today, its stones aligned with the rising sun, just as they did five millennia ago. Each winter solstice, the chamber fills with light, and for a few moments, it is as though the builders still speak across the ages. The DNA hidden in its bones has given us a glimpse of their world, 
a world where power may have flowed not only through stone and ritual, but through blood itself. Were these Ireland's first god-kings? Or something stranger still? We may never know, but Newgrange remains what it has always been, a monument to mystery, a place where myth, science, and the eternal sun converge. And as long as it stands, it will whisper questions we cannot silence.